A regular pentagonal prism and a regular pentagonal pyramid have the same volume and the same height. The bottom of the pyramid edge has length radical 12. What is the length of the prism base edge? Forgive my horrible drawings, but we have a, uh, a pentagonal prism and here's a pentagonal pyramid. Um, the formula for the volume of a prism is area of the base times the height. Whereas the formula for the volume of a pyramid is one-third the area of the base times the height. I'm going to think of the pyramid as figure one and the prism as figure two. So for the pyramid, the volume is um, one-third the area of the base, which I'll call base number one, times the height. And for the prism, the volume will be just the area of the base times the height. I'll call that B2. I'm just calling the height H because they have the same height, so I don't have to use two different variables for that. So, we should be able to set these two equal to each other because it says that um, they have the same volume. All right, so that means that um, one third B1 H is equal to B2 H. Okay, um, we could divide both sides by the height since they're the same. Okay, so I could just divide both sides by the height. So the heights are gone. So the bottom line is that one third the area of the first base there is equal to the area of the second base. So this is the key. Now the thing is we need to know something about the area of a pentagon. All right, I just Googled, Googled it and it seems like this is the formula for the area of a regular pentagon where a, small a here, is the length of a side. So there's that. All right, focus on the area of the base of the pyramid, B1. It is a, rec uh, it is a regular pentagon. So we should be able to use that formula that I was just uh, looking at. So B1 should equal um, 1 fourth the square root and what else we got? 5 times the quantity 5 plus 2 radical 5 Um, times a squared. Hmm. I wonder if this a squared is supposed to be under the radical or not. I wish they wouldn't do that. All right. On the other hand, here's a different version of the formula that makes it more obvious um, that this side length here is in front of the radical, outside the radical. So I think I'll just use this one. Okay, I, I get it. It's the same formula, but they're just making it more clear that the a squared is definitely not under the radical. It's outside the radical. Like maybe I could put it up here or something. Okay, it's the same formula. So let's go forward. Now, the point is we know what a is. The problem said that the side length has edge radical 12. Okay, so that's A in this formula. So this is radical 12. So I've got B1 here is equal to 1 fourth um, times radical 12 times all of this. Um, so I'm just going to change the format of this a little bit 
So leaving the radical two, 12 for one more second. In the other formula, the second one I was showing you, um, they had done the distributive property, so that's why they had 25 plus 10 radical 5. Um, so now I'm going to multiply everything by 12, okay, because I'm going to combine these under one roof. So I'm going to wind up doing um, 12 times 25 and 12 times 10. So that's what's about to happen. So I've got my 1 fourth, so I'm going to have this radical. So 12 times 25 is 300. All right, so I'm going to have 300 plus, of course, 120 radical 5. So this would be an expression for B1. Now remember that 1 third B1 equals B2. Okay, so if I do 1 third of B1, um, a third of 1 fourth is 1 twelfth. All right, so I'm just multiplying both sides by 1 third. So that's going to give me this, and this is going to stay the same. Okay, but this should now equal B2. All right, so we can kind of forget about this over here and focus on this. Now, what about B2? B2 is another pentagon, all right? It's another base. And um, B2 represents the area of this base. Now, um, since we are supposed to find the length of an edge of the pyramid, all right, I think that's what we're supposed to find. What is the length of the prism base edge? So I'm going to go ahead and call that x, because that's our final target. Um, now, in terms of x, we can use this formula again. All right, so just using x instead of a now, um, we should be able to create a, an expression for the area of B2 using the same formula. Okay, I feel like I'm going to need more space. Okay, so B2, you know, the, the area of the uh, prism base is going to equal this using the formula. 1 fourth x squared times the square root of 25 plus 10 radical 5. Pretty ugly. Um, but now these two things are going to be equal to each other. I have to zoom out because it's so long. So it's just a matter of solving this equation for x, right? No, no problem. What could be easier? Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. You know, I don't see any way to make this pretty. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. If I multiply both sides by 12, then I am getting, so I've got this 300 plus 120 radical 5. 4 goes into 12 3 times, so that's 3x squared. And then I've got this radical 25 plus 10 radical 5. So shooting for getting x squared by itself, how about if we divide both sides by 3 radical 25 plus 10 root 5? Okay, that'll cancel out everything except for x squared. So that's going to leave me with x squared over there. So then all of this is going to be what I have equal to x squared. Okay, so of course if I want to get x by itself, I need to take the square root of both sides. Okay, technically this would be plus or minus, 
but I know it has to be positive because we can't have a negative length. So this should give us the final answer. Um, um, I'd be surprised if this was not a decimal, so I'm hoping that a decimal approximation is okay because I'm just not sure how to work through and clean this up any better than it is. Um, so I'm going to type this entire thing into my calculator all at once. So that itself is going to be a challenge. Um, so let's start with a square root and then we have a fraction in there. So in the numerator we have another square root up there. So get another square root going and in there I have 300 plus 120 so 300 plus 120 and then I think I have a square root what was it a 5 okay so that's happening and then in the denominator I have 3 radical so there's my 3 radical 25 plus 10 radical 5 Okay, I think I've done it. I've typed in the entire thing. Moment of truth. Get out of all this and hit enter. Okay, as I thought, I'm getting this decimal. So um, if you had wanted a perfect, some kind of a radical expression, I just, I don't know how to get that. Um, at least not without a lot more thought than th I've done just now. But if a decimal is okay, then I think this is it. 1.07 should be an approximate value for x. And if you did want an exact value, um, <laughs> well, one thing, you, you could take all of this mess and that would be an exact value. Or um, maybe you could take all of this this whole video as a hint and uh, figure out from here or from one of the steps you know take this whole thing as a hint about what to do and maybe you can take it the last step and figure out how to clean this up and get a nice in fact if anybody watches this video um, if you could comment and let us know how to get an exact prettier uh, you know more simplified version of this answer um, we'd all appreciate it. Here endeth the lesson.